These images we've been seeing coming out of Ukraine are terrible. It's easy for thus those of us here, that those of you watching at home, to make the assessment that the Russians have committed war crimes, that Vladimir Putin is guilty of genocide. But is it that easy to prove in court? What is the process of proving war crimes and genocide and making them stick? An old friend, one we've not seen in a really long time, can help us with that. It's Gregory Kiko. He's a, a local attorney with Greenberg Trower. Gregory has also represented cases on international tribunals like war crimes and genocides. He led the team of lawyers that advised the Iraqi Special Tribunal for him to prosecute Saddam Hussein. Greg, good to see you. It's been a long time, Good to man. see you, too. Thank been you. a long time. Yeah. So we keep hearing that war crimes and genocide both are a very hard thing to prove. Why is that? It's difficult to prove because, of course, just the logistics of it being there when it takes place, preserving evidence, talking to witnesses in the fluid uh, nature of a war theater is, is makes ev evidence gathering very hard just on a day to day basis. We saw that when we were in the former Yugoslavia on a daily basis. But th that being said, uh, it's diff it, it, you have to be able to prove exactly, okay, you have a set of civilians that are killed. Was there a legitimate military target there? Was it their intent to to uh, hit a legitimate military target? Or was it their intent to hit civilians? That you have a, a pattern, for instance, the WHO came out with a study uh, yesterday, I believe it was, where a series of healthcare facilities were hit. Well, that seems to be a systematic attack on the civilian population because it's just not a one-off. Yeah. So it really depends situational as to what the attack is. Is there a legitimate military target? You know, was it excessive in light of the potential uh, civilian casualties? And you have to look at them one by one. Is this why I'm hearing that they're telling the Ukrainians who are being able to go back into their into their towns and come out of their homes now to leave everything alone as much as they can until the investigators get there? It's always easier to look at evidence in situ. You want to come on a scene where things aren't moved, uh, where things aren't disturbed. Of course, that, that is the ideal situation for anybody collecting evidence. You see it on a day-to-day -day basis here in Tampa, where the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office sends their forensic people out. Why do they do that right away? Because they want to preserve the evidence and they want to see it. Uh, the, the crime scene where it actually takes place. It's much the same idea, uh, except it's very difficult in a war, wartime uh, situation. Okay, let's say we get there, that, that Vladimir Putin is put on trial. Where would that trial happen? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question because, of course, Russia was not a member of the ICC, and for that matter, neither is Ukraine, even though Ukraine has proved the examination of crimes in the Ukraine since uh, 2014 when Russia took the Crimea. Uh, but that being said, uh, there are a variety of things that can happen. S individual soldiers, individual officers and commanders who gave orders to attack the civilian population or to commit other war crimes. Uh, could be charged by the International Criminal Court, and a, a warrant could be issued. And if that person happens to you know, go to a place or another country where that that uh, cert, that arrest warrant will be honored, that person will be uh, arrested and taken to the Hague uh, for the ICC. That being said, uh, Vladimir Putin will be. It will be difficult to get Vladimir Putin before the ICC. I say, ne I say never say never, because as you said at the outset, the situation with Saddam, Saddam never expected to be in front of a court either. So down the line, could there be a court set up, another ad hoc court set up uh, to try war crimes in, in uh, the Ukraine that was going on? Absolutely. Funded by the international community? Absolutely. Funded by the UN? Doubtful, given the fact that the Russians you know, have veto power on the Security Council, but it can be done. The important thing now is to gather evidence, to gather testimony, to gather you know, uh, photographic and video evidence to catalog who is responsible, come up with a chain of command as to who's ordering these things, and to preserve that to the right time. Greg Kehoe, an old friend. Good to see you. Good glad to see you, you too. Glad you're back with us. Safe travels. and uh, All the best. Hope to talk to you soon. Okay? Likewise. Bye.